Hey everybody and welcome back to What Did I Miss? Where today I'm going to do a different kind of video and that a new story came out that really piqued my interest and I want to talk about it with you so be sure to let me know what you think about it in the comments below. No, definitely not that new story. But there was a story released by the website GiantFreakingRobot.com about Jonathan Archer, played by Scott Bakula, returning to the Star Trek franchise. Now, I'm not advocating that this is going to happen, and in my opinion, the story itself should be taken with a grain of salt. This website states that the story is an exclusive, and they have been right and wrong about things in the past. But since there's not a whole lot going on in Star Trek news right now, I thought it would be interesting to first gauge the validity of the story, and then try and guess as to how Jonathan Archer could return, if this ends up being the case. So this video is not as much educational as it is more just like two Star Trek fans talking about something. If you are a Star Trek fan, don't forget to like this video so more Star Trek fans will be able to see it. Okay, so let's look into this article and see what we can make of it. The article was released yesterday, February 12th, and reads as follows. Exclusive, Scott Bakula returning to Star Trek as Captain Archer. Captain Archer is probably not one of the more widely beloved captains in the history of Star Trek, but it's tough to argue that Scott Bakula didn't give the role his all. If nothing else, it was Bakula's performance that shined through the entirety of the Star Trek Enterprise. Though there has not been a ton of calls to revisit a lot of what has showcased in that particular series, fans would not turn their noses up at seeing Jonathan Archer show up in the franchise once again. Well, it looks like that is exactly the plan for the not-too-distant future. I'm not going to read the entire article, but I will put a link to it in the description if you would like to read it. But the article continues on and first brings up two other exclusive stories that the website claims they broke. Now, of the two stories listed, I believe that only one has been confirmed by Marvel, and that is that Don Cheadle will be appearing in the upcoming Disney Plus series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. A series, by the way, that I can't wait for and expect to see many videos on my channel about it. The other story about Thanos being in the upcoming Eternals movie, I have seen in other places, but I'm not 100% sure that is confirmed. They could be cheeky with this story in the end though, because I do believe that Josh Brolin is lending his voice as Thanos to an episode of the What If animated series, and I think that has been confirmed. So even if he doesn't show up in the Eternals movie like they're specifically pointing out here, they can come back and say, well, we said he was coming back, and he did, so there. Myself, whenever I see a news story online, I always try and confirm it with other sources, but unfortunately with an exclusive story, obviously you can't do that. So you have to depend on the reputation of the website or the author in this case. I looked up past stories the author did, and some seem on the money, and others seem a bit clickbaity. So again, take this story with a grain of salt. Read it for yourself and make your own assumptions, but I think if you look at the story like a conscientious objector, like I am, I think we can kind of map out how true this is and if it will happen and how. Now, of course, in the past few years, Years, we have had two captains return to the franchise in Patrick Stewart in the show Picard and Kate Mulgrew will be reprising the character Catherine Janeway by voicing her in the upcoming animated series Prodigy which already has a two season order and will air on Nickelodeon. So there is some precedent there. Also, Scott Bakula is a working actor just like Patrick Stewart and Kate Mulgrew and has been appearing on the show NCIS New Orleans for many seasons and the show is still going. So him coming back to the franchise is not as far-fetched as saying someone like Avery Brooks is coming back, which was also a story that circulated over the past six months and one I never really believed because since Deep Space Nine went off the air, Avery Brooks has all been but retired from acting and instead focused on teaching and music. So if this story read Avery Brooks is returning to Star Trek with no other context, I would immediately dismiss it because I know that would be a much more difficult sell to the actor, especially for a cameo role. But since Scott Bakula is working and has spoken highly of the character before, I could see him having interest in returning. But given his schedule as a full-time actor, I doubt he would be available for anything more than a cameo. The article does say that the plan is for Archer to have a cameo, and then if it goes well to branch out into a new series, but I doubt that would be the case unless perhaps NCIS is no longer on the air. Kate Mulgrew was able to find a new fan base due to her appearances on the show Orange is the New Black, but did not take on the full-time role on the new series Prodigy until Orange is the New Black ran its final season. So already we have established that yes, Scott Bakula would probably be interested in returning if given the option, and that has been happening recently with other former captains in Star Trek. But how would Archer work into the storyline and on which show? The article guesses that it would be Picard, but honestly, if all the shows in production right now, that would be the last place I would expect to see Archer. The timeline just doesn't match up, as Picard takes place around 250 years after Archer was at the helm of the Enterprise, which seems like too long for Archer to still be alive. I suppose the show could show Archer as an android or golem or whatever Picard is now as well, but I don't think that would sit right with fans since we are still trying to get used to the idea of Picard being in that state. 
Then there's Discovery, and again, that is just way too far off in the future for Archer to still be around. He could show up as a hologram, but I think that would make fans think of the series finale of the Enterprise, which basically took place on a holodeck and was not well received. So that may just be opening an old wound for no reason. There are two animated series, Lower Decks and Prodigy, but again, those take place around the time before Picard but after Next Generation and Voyager, so Archer would be a monument by now. That really only leaves one show, and I think it makes perfect sense for Archer to show up on the Captain Pike-led Strange New World. For one, that is the one ship that is chronologically closest to the time frame of the NX Enterprise, especially if we see an earlier mission of the USS Enterprise that takes place before we meet the crew on Discovery. I released a video this week on 5 things I want to see on Strange New Worlds that I will link here if you would like to watch it, and one of the things I wanted to see is a storyline with Robert April, the first captain of the USS Enterprise. While it is true that Archer was the captain of the NX class, since that ship was commissioned before the advent of Starfleet and the Federation, it is considered to be a forefather of the USS Enterprise. I don't know if the same was true in the Kelvin universe, but in the Prime universe, Christopher Pike was the first officer of the USS Enterprise under Captain April for their first five-year mission. It would make sense to have Archer show up for the ship's first voyage. If you recall, Dr. Leonard McCoy showed up on the first episode of The Next Generation, which linked that show to its live-action predecessor, the original series. Then again, when Deep Space Nine had its first episode, Emissary, it featured Patrick Stewart as Captain Picard, playing a pivotal role in the development of the commander of said space station, Benjamin Sisko. Also on Voyager, the crew had a chance to stop by Quarks on Deep Space Nine before their fateful first voyage, forgive the pun. Star Trek has an established tradition of passing the baton to the next show in line, and having the captain of the NX Enterprise show up for the first mission of the USS Enterprise would be the perfect amount of fan service. So in the end, do I think this is a true story? My answer is that it very well could be. As I stated, if the author said that Avery Brooks was coming back, I'd be very much more skeptical, because that is convincing someone not only to be on your show, but to return to a job they have retired from. Also, if the author stated that Scott Bakula was definitely getting his own show right off the bat similar to Picard or Janeway, then I would immediately dismiss it while knowing that Bakula has a full-time gig already that is probably making him a lot more money than he would be on a new streaming series. But given the history of the franchise, as well as the availability of the actor, I can definitely see this coming to fruition, possibly as a guest star or cameo role in the very first episode of Strange New Worlds. Alex Kurtzman has said that he wants Strange New Worlds to have the feel of a pre-2005 era Star Trek, and what better way to introduce that feeling into your new show by adding a piece of it. I also think that fans would love to see Archer again, as many feel cheated by the way the show ended. As a fan though, I really do want this to happen, and I hope we get an announcement from the studio over the next few months, but you let me know. What did I miss? Do you think that this story is crazy, or can you see Archer coming back? Let me know in the comments what you think and how you would bring it back. Thank you for joining me, I hope that you had some fun watching this video, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?